Bill, you've been to Antarctica. We saw your <laughs> excitement uh, arriving um, for your first visit. How is the, uh, um, what does the continent capture about both nature's wonders mm. and the peril facing our planet today? It is, Jonathan, hands down the wildest place I've ever been on seven continents. I describe it as sort of Alaska on steroids. You know, you go to <laughs> where I met Jim uh, at the Mendenhall Glacier, there, there's the glacier. You go down there, it's like there's a glacier and another and another. You're surrounded, and it's just the biggest, most expansive, wildest place you've ever seen. And then experts who have spent more time than a few minutes, you know, explain to you, yeah, there, there shouldn't be rainbows here. You know, there should, be not, there should not be waterfalls coming off these glaciers. This is supposed to be a frozen desert, but it is melting at such a rate that has exceeded even the expectations of, of scientists a decade ago. Um, and I don't know what wakes us up at, at a certain point. Uh, you know, James showed me these pictures of the Mendenhall Glacier, you know, and how they've shrunk like a mattress, like a, like a guest air mattress that you just deflate when they leave. <laughs> Uh, and you'd think that those pictures would be enough to wake people up to avoid the worst, but then this summer, people in Juneau, just downhill from that glacier, woke up with three feet of freezing water in their living rooms. It's called a Glacier Lake Outburst Flood, or GLOF. This is a new part of our climate change Gl vernacular. Wait, say that again? GLOF. GLOF. G-L-O-F. Glacier. Glacier Lake Outburst Flood. And there are millions of people living under glaciers, especially in the Himalayas. And maybe it's an earthen dam keeping them from all that ticking time bomb, melting water, mm. drip by drip, that's coming down. Uh, and so what I left an article with was just awe and wonder times 10, both the, the fear and the fascination. Um, but Antarctica also gives me hope. It's the one place that represents scientific consensus. Nobody owns it. All the nations of the world said it's going to be there for peace and science. Uh, the comeback of the humpback whale, which I went down there to study with whale scientists, is a, is a modern conservation miracle. We almost wiped them out uh, when I was born. And then in my lifetime, we had one whale swim within a mile of Times Square, come up the Hudson River, because oh. the cleaning up the Hudson has been so successful relative to you know, toxic days past. Uh, but it is, I wish everybody could go, and I wish you could see with your own eyes the rate at, the, at which these are changing and talk to folks who know it really well about the, what they fear about. And I also got an amazing lesson uh, from a penguin. Uh, some of the ones I met down there uh, were watching them make nests, and the father goes and, and collects pebbles to build the nest, and then the, the mama chick you know, sits on the chicks, historically in some species, but what broke my heart is they're making these nests and they explain to us, well, these chicks, these babies will never survive the winter because it's way too late for nesting season. There was an unusually warm uh, spring. It brought a lot of snowfall. Penguins need bare rock to nest. Mm. And so some species like chinstrap penguins are trying to hatch their eggs in standing water. They just hadn't adapted. But gentoo penguins, this one particular species, really flexible. They're moving their nests. They're going further south. They're finding the cold spots. They're being adaptive. And as a result, their numbers are skyrocketing while the other species are crashing. And the scientists who study them say, there's a lesson for us in that. The, the, the humans that are more adaptive, especially on coastal cities and building and putting more mangroves and understanding what's coming will be 